Hi, hang on. Am I even lit? Hello. Okay. Hi. <laughs> it's not quite, it's 3.58. We're not quite started yet. If you're watching this on the playback, this is a live stream. It's not edited or anything. So it's just going to be me doing stuff for like an hour. I don't know, 45 minutes. An hour. But if you're here in the chat live, what's up? Oh, wait, hang on. I need to, do I need to brace that? <laughs> A58. Oh, Zadel's here. Hey, I loved the knife that you made um, that you posted in the group earlier. I was like, okay, the hoof trimming knife. I'm like, that's handy. We're going to get started in just a minute. I've got my unicorn horns that I'm going to do. I'll do the intro. I'm just kind of waiting for people to show up in the chat. People like Madeline and Autism Centaur. Oh, hey, Autism Centaur. I meant before I went live, I meant to comment on um, a comment that you made uh, to remind you that I was going live because I think you missed it last week and you were like, oh, no, I missed it. So I was going to go comment on that saying, um, hey, I'm going to be online in an hour, but I forget. My brain is like a sponge full of holes and sometimes it holds lots of things. But if something squeezes my brain, stuff leaks out the holes and then it's gone. <laughs> So that was one of those things that got squeezed out a hole, and I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm still finishing up. Post it when it's done. Okay, yeah. All right, hang on, you guys. I'm cracking open a fresh one. We stocked up. We went and got like four boxes of Diet Dr. Pepper. I really need to stop. I keep saying I'm going to stop. Isn't it like every live stream? I'm like, you guys, I'm not going to be drinking Diet Dr. Pepper anymore. Every once in a while, there'll be a live stream, and I'm like, oh, I quit. And then next week, I'll be like, because I'm a mess. It's almost time. 3.59. It's almost time to, to do the show, y'all. I'm almost on. Hang on. Okay. That's too much. I look like a beauty YouTuber. Hang on. I look like I'm trying to be a beauty guru. Mm. Never quit Dr. Pepper. I know. I want to say I will, but it reminds me of like the, what was it? Zombieland, the movie Zombieland, the way Woody Harrelson's character goes nuts for Twinkies. Like if the zombie apocalypse happens, that's going to be me, but with Diet Dr. Pepper, <laughs> I'm going to be like, <gasps> an entire truck of it. Oh, like I will risk zombies for this. <laughs> that will absolutely be me. Um. Hi, Carbon Sweet Steel, Hickory Handle. Ooh, Hickory, yes, that sounds good. Hang on, you guys. I forgot to charge my phone. That's why I'm like squinting into the chat. Oh, it's four o'clock. We got to get started. Oh, 401. I'm late. Oh, my God. Hi. Hi. I'm Michelle from Unicorn and Centaur, and welcome to the weekly live stream. I do a live stream every week with um, creative uh, crafts, creative crafts, art. Crafts, I don't know, art sounds a little bit too elevated for what I do, but crafts sounds a little too summer camp. I'm not sure what to call what I do. I tell people I'm an artist, but I don't know. Anyway, but this is a creative live stream, and every week we make stuff for our horses. Sometimes we make things for ourselves or for other people. Today I am working on a whole bunch of unicorn horns. I don't know, if you're a creative person, I don't know if you're like this, but um, I will get working on a project and there are times when like something will stop me. I run out of something that is crucial to the process or something breaks and I'm too frustrated to fix it or I get tired or something and I tell myself I'm going to get back to this tomorrow. And then 300 tomorrows later, <laughs> I'm looking at a pile of stuff. So I have a whole pile of unicorn horns sitting here behind me that range in, um, this is a unicorn horn. It's, it's in there somewhere. Um, so this is like from the very beginning part of the process to here's a little bit further along, but it's, it's still like totally bendy and flexy. It's not what we want yet. And then this one, I think this one needs another coat of the plastic cream, but this one is almost ready to glitter up. So, um, one of the reasons I'm getting back to this now is I had, this is Sculptra Coat. This is the plastic cream that I use to coat my unicorn horns. I make them with a foam core to make them super lightweight. And then I coat them with this plastic cream that dries and it makes like a plastic coating around it. And this stuff is actually, if you cosplay at all, 
Um, this is fantastic stuff and you need it. It is, um, it's more durable than Mod Podge. It becomes a layer of plastic. You can actually build it up and sculpt things out of it, which is why it's called sculpt or coat. Um, so I use it to make a plastic coating on my unicorn horns. So they're not like totally hard, um, like solid, like some like solid horns, but it's also um, um, a little bit more sturdy than plush horns. Uh, but has that lightweight. So I'm, I was almost out of sculptor coat, which is one of the reasons I left this project on the back burner. And, and but da, 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 look what came in the mail, my gallon size sculptor coat. I was like, you know what? I got to finish this. I got to make more people need unicorns and I've got to figure out how to do this. So I've actually had this for a long time, a couple years. So I want to crack this one open today and I also want to crack open the fresh one and check out the difference like how has it weathered because it's been in several different kinds of weather. You're not supposed to freeze this stuff and if you're going to get some uh, sculptor coats order now. Um, you only have until like September or October. They only ship for about half a year because I think it's in New Jersey the company. I want to say made in the USA. Oh no Greensboro North Carolina. I could have sworn the company was in New Jersey. Anyway, um, this can't be frozen. It um, it changes the substance when it gets frozen. So they can't ship it anytime there's a uh, threat of a freeze. So let me check the chat. Let me get in the chat. Also, I did not... Um, what was I going to say? I didn't... I forgot to charge my phone. So my phone is not totally charged. So Autism Center, I got my question on the last video. Oh, um, about making um, a video about me? Um, yeah, that would be fine. That would be fine. Joanne is here, hey. May 22nd is your birthday. Oh yes, that is coming up. Uh, Becca, what color horn do you think will fit Pepper? Um, Pepper could wear any color horn because he is just absolute snowy white. I would be tempted to do like a white, like a pearlized mother of pearl kind of horn for him just because he is so absolutely snowy white that it would just sort of like extend the magic that already is Pepper. But related question, are you asking because you're getting Pepper? By the way, for anyone watching, uh, Pepper is a uh, former Savannah carriage horse who has done tours. And I think, is he up for sale right now? Are they trying to find a home for him? Um, can you use any paint on the sculpture coat? I think so. I have put um, spray paint over it and I've used, I use mostly acrylic paint because my horns aren't left outside to weather the elements. Um, I store them inside and um, sort of keep a close eye on them. So, uh, yeah, I use just, I've used just about any kind. Waiting for Amy to say he's, sort of, okay, fingers crossed then, fingers crossed. Absolutely. All right, so I am going to do some stuff. I think I want to put a coat of sculpture coat on a couple of these to start with, and then I might carve a horn, start carving a horn. Wait, before I do get started, I have one more piece of very exciting news, or at least it's really exciting to me. We've had, um, in the Extra Questions group on Facebook, um, it gets spicy in there sometimes. Everybody is usually like really super nice to each other, but not everybody agrees. Um, like there was a blow up on a post over a bit. It was on a twisted wire bit, which is not a bit I would use on a horse, but I don't necessarily think the bit itself is abuse or cruelty. It's not like it's a bike chain or anything. Um, so I didn't want to get into all of that, but I want to allow, God, where was I going with this? Hang on, let me go. That was an example of things blowing up, um, but how people will disagree about things. There was another post where somebody had posted something with glitter and then somebody came on immediately and was like, do not use glitter. It is destroying the planet and this is evil. And I'm like, whoa, you need to read the room because this is extra equestrians and we are all literally coated in glitter right now. <laughs> and, uh, so, but then I was thinking too, like, it is kind of true. Um, there's glitter particles that show up all over the environment. And of course, glitter is not destroying the environment. I'm pretty sure like plastic grocery bags and um, corporate waste are m much more uh, filling the environment with much more waste than glitter is. However, 
it is a concern. So I was looking for a source for biodegradable glitter and I found it thanks to one of our extra equestrians members, a subscriber of this channel. I forgot to tag her in the post today. Oh my God. Uh, the witch of wax haw. If you follow her on Facebook, she makes all kinds of stuff and is just incredibly talented. Uh, the witch of wax haw W A X H A W I believe. Um, and uh, so go follow her. But she uh, showed me a uh, source for biodegradable glitter. So I had to buy this in bulk and this is extremely expensive and I'm going to sell it in my Etsy store, which it's going to end up being almost $10 an ounce. Um, so it's not like going, if you're used to like me going to the dollar store or Walmart and just like loading up on glitter and being like, woo, and then tossing it everywhere. Like it's a fairy party in your studio, you know, then it's the price tag is a shock. So it's going to change, but see that it's going to change the way I use glitter. I'm not going to just sort of fling it around anymore and then just kind of clean it up later. I'm going to have to actually be careful with it. Oh my God. Oh, it's so soothing to like, to feel in the package. It's like, it's like patting a bag of rice or something. Oh my God. Oh, this is soothing. <laughs> okay, so this is the silver. This is Silver Fox, and they have a bunch of uh, colors, but I didn't have enough money to get like every color they had. Um, if you know, um, if you have a particular color glitter that you'd like to buy the biodegradable glitter, let me know, and I can probably buy one or two more colors. Um, <clears throat> but this is the silver, and then there's a gold. I'm so excited about this, but I'm going to package it up because I have several projects in mind for this, not just for the unicorn horns, but I want to figure out someone had posted online how to do glitter hooves where you use Elmer's glue and glitter. And they just used a squirty bottle where they just blow the glitter on the hooves. But I would be, again, a little more careful. I'm working right now to figure out exactly how much of this expensive stuff that you need to glitter up your horse's hooves. So, and I'm using Mod Podge instead of Elmer's glue. So I know now how much Mod Podge it takes to go over the hoof. We're going to take the glitter and figure out how much glitter it takes to glitter up all of your hooves. But that's one of the reasons I haven't been doing this at the barn. I don't want glitter all over at the barn where there's other borders and other horses and wildlife. And there's all these like plastic glitter particles going into the earth. So this is going to make me feel better about doing the extra stuff I do at my barn and then like washing things down the drain. It's not going to make me go, Oh my God, is some horse going to die with glitter in his poop and colic? And the vet's going to be like, oh, why is there <laughs> glitter in his poop? And I'm going to be like, so this is golden sun tears. So this is the gold. Look at that. So like for parades and photo shoots, I'm so excited about this stuff. So maybe we will crack into the glitter here. We've got a lot to do on the live stream today and I haven't even gotten started. I'm going to carve up some unicorn horns. I'm going to check out my sculptor coat. I'm going to get excited about bio. Who else is excited about biodegradable glitter? Anybody, anybody? ASMR. I used to use clear hoof polish. Stayed one, um, uh, yeah, I have tried a lot of different things for doing glitter. I'm going to do a whole video on how to, um, different ways to put glitter or color on your horse's hooves safely, um, and rating them, like how expensive it is, um, how quickly it wears off. Uh, like, is it about to rain? Like I'm suddenly realizing I'm losing my light over here. This is my window with my natural light. And I'm like, Oh, now I have one light. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> like why? Do you want to set up another light? I'm annoyed. Oh, yes. So, I, yeah, I was hoping, people, like, I'm not going to judge anybody who still uses dollar store glitter because uh, not everybody can afford almost $10 an ounce for glitter. That's a lot. But for people who want to have that, this might make it a little bit easier. I need to do a little bit more research, but that is coming up. So y'all look for the glitter episode. Let me, I know what I want to do. I know what I want to do right now. Hang on, everybody. We're going to get to... This is the smallest unicorn horn I have right now. Where's the bigger one? This one, this one I laid it down in some paper and so there's like paper on the edge of it, but that'll get covered up by the sculpture guard. I'm not worried about it. So, and see how it's like, it's been up against something because it doesn't have enough of the sculpture coat on it. <laughs> All right, I think I'm gonna work on these two because this one, these two might be for, for specific horses. I don't know if these is for, these, these is, I don't know if these is for sale. 
I don't know if these are going to be for sale. I think this one's going to be for blue. Uh, my friend Amy's mini. And this one is going to be for Savannah, a giant black Percheron horse. I'm just making them for horses. So, okay. But now we have to compare. Okay, so here is my sculpture coat. I don't, you can't really see it. But there's like a little bit of a yellowish. It almost looks like egg white. It's separated a little bit, but it looks like with some spirited elbow greased stirring, that can be back to normal in no time. I have used sculpture coat that is years old and obviously separated, and it still worked for me. Hang on. Oof. I just want to see the difference. Is this like sealed? Uh oh. Did we have a leak? Have we leaked? Okay, wait, hang on, it gives me directions. Oh, I need a screwdriver? Wait, huh? Hang on. <laughs> it looks like it's telling me to put a screwdriver in the side, but there's no side, there's only an underneath. All right, hang on. Hey! Will you bring me a screwdriver? Will you bring me a screwdriver sure. that I can open this with? Phillips or flat or flat? Flat, yes. <laughs> Phillips head. Yes, I need a Phillips head screwdriver to open my sculpture bit. Okay. Okay. So which one we're going to work on? Let's do the little one first, and then I can prop it up over there. It's the little horn. He. I'm doing a story about centaurs. Um, centaurs are fun. You can do, um, all sorts of things with centaurs. I mean, traditionally they were warriors or, um, uh, uh, physicians, healers. Um, so like Chiron was the wounded healer. They all wanted to join the party. They all did that. You, you gave me a little Phillips head anyway. Yeah. Just so that you could hand it back to me. Why don't you? Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> all right. Thank you. I appreciate you. <laughs> okay. So there you go. Hi, Scott. So I'm going to assume it means to put it underneath this way. Like, <laughs> break at opening. To remove cover, break at openings. So does that mean I have to... I never got one this big before. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. I might have to call Scott back in here to work on it. Why? Okay. I don't even know if I can show y'all this. So there's this little thing where it looks like the screwdriver is going right down into the top of the thing to separate it from the side. But this is the top. And the part that separates it from the side is underneath the lid. So I can't do what the picture is telling me to do. And trying to get it under here, trying to get it under each of the things. Uh, did that do it? I wonder if I just break the things. Y'all are watching me have an existential crisis right here. It's going to come up and then sploosh all over me. Oh my God. I need help, y'all. And like, well, obviously it came out a little bit on the side here. Maybe that's my problem. This is not what it looks like when it dries and that's concerning me. Why do I have so much trouble? More, the better question is why do I wait until I'm live on the air to figure out that I don't know how to do something? Like I probably need to talk to my therapist about that. Hang on. Like, is this a need of mine? Oh, wait. Oh, wait, y'all. I think we're about to have a baby. Hang on. I'm crowning. Hang on. Wait, no. <laughs> wait. <sighs> okay, hang on. I'm going to check the chat. I smell it. Okay, I've cracked it open enough to smell it because it smells kind of like glue or paint. It smells like glue. And it is hot also. 
I have not turned on the air conditioner yet. We have the windows open. So I am just sitting here glowing for y'all. <sighs> Before I all get, I know, Becca, you know me. That's exactly how it happens with me. Since I'm like, oh no, I'm going to very calmly do this the right way. I'm going to very calmly do this to work. work and then you'll see me getting to the breaking point, And then, yeah, Michelle smash. I'm going to get it, y'all. The cool thing about this right now is you can't see right now, but I've got a fan right down here, and it is blowing right at my skirt. <laughs> so when I get overheated, I can just hang on, y'all. Let me lift up my fupa. There you go. All right. I'm going to get this open. We're going to get through this together. I'm going to work on these unicorn horns. I want you to do this with me. Okay. Okay. Honestly, I still have the little sculptor coat. So, okay. I feel like these aren't open over here. Maybe I actually did something when I, okay. Yeah. These are open. That one's open. This one is not. I don't know what I'm doing. Hi, I'm Michelle from Unicorn and Centaur. Please subscribe to my channel because I know what I'm doing. Oh wait, I found one. I found the one. I am about to Hulk smash this. Okay, Becca, if I can hear you laughing all the way from North Carolina, Becca. Wait, <laughs> I think I did it. Okay. It looks thicker and I don't know if that's cause it leaked. It's still gonna make, this is kind of thick. It looks kind of like buttercream frosting. I don't know if that's because it had air introduced to it. I'm going to let it go and sit down here for a second. I'm going to call that an accomplishment. Oh, it actually snaps back down. Okay. Okay. Hang on. I need my fan another minute. Summer in Georgia, y'all. I don't know where you are in the world. Some people are having um, like coolness. Didn't, didn't people have snow like last week? It didn't snow down here. It just got down to like 68 degrees and we all had to put on a sweater. Okay. Yeah. See, I did it. Yes. So what we're going to do now, I need a brush for to put on the, um, I like to use a flat brush, uh, with a bigger flat brush, you can cover more area, but it can also be harder to sort of, um, smooth out little lumps and things like that. You don't want your brush too, too big. So in my humble opinion. Okay. So we're going to use, no, maybe it's not, maybe we're fine. I'm going to stir this up a little bit. Oh yeah. Oh, that's satisfying. That's very satisfying. Okay. This stuff is not as sticky as glue or Mod Podge and it is, uh, it's thicker than Mod Podge and it's thicker than paint. Um, so like if I get enough, it'll drip. But it's still fairly thick. So it's kind of fun and satisfying and a little bit soothing to paint it on things. So here am I. So here I'm going to go do it. So this is all I do. Put you over here. Oh, fart. I do too much. Now because this can dry fairly quickly, um, you want to remember where you've worked. Uh, you don't want to stop halfway through and be like, oh, I'm just going to go to the bathroom or check on something. Um, or whatever, because when you come back, it'll already be starting to dry and you are going to have a hard time telling where you left off with the last coat with the, what is that? Why are you on? So 
I usually start from the top and work my way down. And you'll see, um, I just, I love this stuff. I love working with it. Um, I may end up using it instead of Mod Podge to make the crown or the metal armor pieces that I want to use. I may like that better. Okay. So I should put a link to this in the description box. I don't think it's there. Rose Art Brand. If you just look up Sculpt or Coat, it should come up in a Google search. But it's not something you can find on Amazon or Walmart. This company makes it. They only ship it when they can't, when it won't freeze. And it is a plastic cream. It dries clear. I have used this actually, if you don't use enough of it and your horn is, or whatever your project is, is too flimsy still, um, you can just add more coats, even if you've already painted it. I have used coats of Sculptor Coat over glittered portions before. Like I've had the entire um, unicorn horn glittered and done and then gotten it out to the barn. And in the heat of the summer here, it droops. So I have to put more Sculptor Coat on it to give it uh, more layers of um, structure and support so that it doesn't droop. So yeah, I have come back and I'm like, well, what happens if I just paint over the entire thing, glitter, paint, and all? And what happened was it got more structurally sound and it dried clear. I think eventually with enough coats of it, it does develop kind of um, an, a translucent quality where it's like not completely, it's not opaque. It's never gonna dry opaque, but that's why we painted it, right? Also, I wanted to wear my hair down today. I did my uh, color last night and uh, I redid my color. So it actually looks really pretty down, but again, the heat, I could turn on the air conditioning, but mm. <laughs> could turn on the air conditioning, but I don't really have a job right now. <laughs> We're trying to save money. Which reminds me, I do have a Patreon, and if you'd like to see more of this kind of stuff, as well as get your name in the credits of my videos, and join the Super Secret Unicorn and Centaur group, where I post blooper reels from uh, video shoots uh, that I do. Um, I also post random rants and things like that, and also discounts on my Etsy stuff. Um, you can join the Patreon. And that is like, it's like a monthly subscription. So you like pay $1 or $5 or $10 and each one gets you different benefits. Um, like the more you pay into it, the more benefits you get, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but if that's something you're interested in, because I use those funds for, um, right now the patrons that I have pay for giveaways. So when I do, um, like when I give away t-shirts and stuff in the extra equestrians group and do giveaways on here, those are paid for from Patreon funds. So if um, I really could use some more patrons so that we can get, if I had more of a monthly income from that, that goes right back into the channel. That goes right back into things like buying more colors of glitter and offering discounts on it and um, give more and more giveaways. Um, so I need to talk up my Patreon more. I don't like, you know, there's marketing things that you're supposed to do with your stuff, like how you're supposed to market your social media. And I'm just not good at all that kind of stuff. I'm just out here making unicorns and being goofy with my horses and hoping that's enough because I'm not a salesperson. <laughs> I'm not a salesperson at all. I'm not. People think that because I'm a performer, like I'm an actor, oh, you must be a really good salesperson. No, I take everybody's first no. I do not wait for the hard no. Because for me, my first no is my hard no. If I told you no, I meant it. I don't say things I don't mean. Um, <laughs> so when somebody keeps coming at me when I've said no one time, I'm like, ugh. So I remember that like when I'm selling things, I'll be like, hey, do you want this? And people are like, no. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> But I remember a sales job once and they were kind of horrified by that. They were like, no, you have to keep asking. I'm like, but they said no. So I have this coated. It's already started to get a little bit clear up there at the top. 
not drying as fast as I had thought. I'm going to set that over to the side where it's going to live quietly and peacefully without falling over. Because you're going to have some company in a minute. i got to do a bigger one. I'm going to do this one. What time is it? 427. And after I do this one, I think I'm going to start carving one. Or maybe I'll crack into the the glitter and see what that looks like. So we can look and see that what that looks like. And maybe just like put a little bit of glitter on this guy. Just on the tip, just the tip. <laughs> Actually that needs to have more sculpture coat on it. So maybe I ought to put the glitter on the copper horn. Okay. Downloading the video, I don't know what to call it. Oh, sometimes I hate titling videos. There again, I'm not a good salesperson because there's ways you're supposed to title your YouTube videos for to maximize the search engine and to maximize um, you know, your views and things like that. But I'm just like, I get stuck on titles and I don't know what to call things. Kayling here yesterday in Sweden. Oh my goodness. Brittany! And Blue Raven Farms is here. Yes. Hello, my baby. Hello, my baby. We're playing with unicorn horns. Big, floppy unicorn horns. This one might be big enough for Gaia the Ground Shaker. That is a big old unicorn horn. All right, I'm going to sculpture coat this one. We're going to sculpture coat this one while we're chatting about whatever. Um, so, what were we talking about? Unicorns, something like that. Living our best lives. Biodegradable un uh, glitter. So, what I'm hopefully going to try to do, I hate making Etsy listings. I don't know why, but it just, I dig my feet in it. But I have a bunch of stuff to put on Etsy. Um, so, hopefully later tonight, I can just sit down and list a bunch of stuff. Because I have hats from horses that I've got for sale. Um, I need to portion out that glitter and have that ready to go. I've got polo wraps. I have a, I did a video on how to make polo wraps. And in the video, I was like, hey, if you want to buy one, check out my Etsy store. And I haven't listed them yet. <laughs> there hasn't got a lot of views. So, like, nobody's called or messaged me and be like, hey, where are the polo wraps? Did you sell them already? Like, so, yeah. Like I said, I'm a terrible salesperson. <laughs> terrible salesperson. So, yeah, I need to brush up my Etsy store. My Etsy store is more of like an afterthought. Now I'm like, oh, right, I should sell stuff. <laughs> right, I need money. <laughs> like I'll whine about not, I, I'll whine about needing money. And then I'm looking around here at all this stuff that I've made that I could be selling. And I'm like, ugh, I'm an idiot. Why? So doing this now, this may well need um, at two more coats after this. I, I start with three coats of Sculptor Coat. It's a lot thinner than you think. Um, this plastic cream. And again, not just for unicorn horns. You can use this for all kinds of stuff. Um, anything that you would use Mod Podge for, I think this is superior. I think it dries better. I think it's more durable. Um, you can also build it up on things and use it to make um, sculptural details. Oh my gosh. Oh, and Joanna, I just thought like, if you're in Sweden, like, is your name Joanna? Or like, are you Swedish or are you an expat and you're just living in Sweden? Like, cause here I am like pronouncing the J like an American. So just curious. Cause I know like if I don't see you in my everyday life and I just am looking at your avatar or your, you know, name or whatever, I may not know how to pronounce everything. So, you know, and I know like in some languages, the J is a J and in some languages, the J is an H and in some languages, the J is a Y. And I also, I, I spoke German. I can't say I speak German anymore. I haven't spoken German regularly in 20 years. Um, but I used to speak very fluent German. And so my tendency was to always turn the J's into, uh, yeah sounds. <clears throat> But yes, I kind of miss being able to speak German. I spoke it so fluently at one point that sometimes I would dream in German. And that was so neat.
to wake up from a dream that had been entirely in a language that is not my own. Um, I mean, if you're, if you're not American, that's probably adorable that I just said that because in most countries besides America, you are taught another language in school. Like most, pe most people on the planet are at least bilingual. Um, but Americans are not, that's an elective to learn another language in America. Um, so, but so yeah, international people are like, oh, that's cute. One time she dreamed in another language. <laughs> Trying to make sure I get all of this into the little cracky doodles of the horn. Because I don't want those to be like structurally, on. those will be weak points then. That'll really help uh, bring it all down if, let's bring it all down. Let's bring it all down. Sorry, I went dead Kennedys for one second. But we want to make sure it is structurally sound up in here. Mustang Hannah, hey, how are you? Good to see you in the chat. Um, what's going on? Just um, send Autism Centaur was saying, I uh, just not posted. Don't take it out. Okay. Um, Brittany was saying, got uh, 2236 on Ray of Light Horse Show. Is that your trainer's horse, Ray of Light? Um, just asking. I saw the pics, and you look great. Um, okay, hang on. And who else had something to say in here? Laura, I hope my Mary ready. Bless her heart. Uh oh, Becca's. We're blessing people's hearts now. I try not to bless people's hearts unless they really, really deserve it. I'm just like spraying sculpting coat now. If anyone is not from the American South in the chat and you don't know what bless your heart means, sometimes you'll hear a Southerner say, bless your heart. Bless her heart. Well, bless his heart. Um, and it's a thing we say down here, but it's not always a good thing. There is a sincere way to use it. Um, like, if, like, did you hear the Johnsons got in a car wreck? <gasps> bless their hearts. Do they need casseroles? We need to organize the dinner pickup. Um, so that way, you know, when you're feeling sorry for someone, that's how you use it sincerely. But most people use it um, uh, to gently chastise people who are complaining about their first world problems. So if you're complaining about something and a Southerner says, well, bless your heart, um, they just called you a spoiled brat, pretty much. <laughs> they pretty much told you, you don't know how good you got it. <laughs> But my, that's not even my favorite way to use bless your heart. If you're not familiar with it, the real, the real Southern way to say bless your heart, the way to really, really get it, uh, the way to use it to its best is when you have an unpleasant truth to tell. Um, this is the best way to use it, in my opinion. Um, sometimes you have to say something ugly, but you don't want people to think you're a terrible person, right? Did you see the Smiths had a new baby? Ugliest thing I've ever seen without a tail. Bless its heart. So I called their baby ugly, but because I blessed its heart, y'all know I'm not a terrible person, right? So, right, y'all hear Becca got her braces off? She could still eat an apple through a picket fence. Bless her heart. So, just because, so I said something ugly about someone, but I'm not a terrible person. It just had to be said. So, anyway, that was kind of off topic from unicorn horns, but um, that's pretty much, there you go. That's the Southernism, bless your heart. The bottom line is, if you're not from here and somebody blesses your heart, <laughs> I have, when my son Liam was really little, I'd make him clean his room and he'd complain about having there's so much to clean up. And I'd say, oh, do you have too many toys? Bless your heart. And he'd say, mommy, I know what that means. <laughs> he gets so offended if I use bless your heart on it. So here we are. This one took a little bit longer because it's bigger. I know size doesn't matter even in unicorn horns, but it does mean it probably take you longer to do something. You know? Um, tasted your mare supplement. I mean, I, you know what? Anything that you're going to feed to a horse, you should be able to eat yourself. Um, I mean, they're all kind of vegetarian ingredients, right? What is it? Grain, oats, and molasses. And, you know, oh my God, I am like spraying myself with sculpture coat. This is where I'm wearing my little, this is my craft skirt. It's pretty much an apron. <laughs> Who am I kidding? It's pretty much a rag. 
okay. And I'm not go taking this all the way down to the bottom. That's going to spring back there. But um, once I get it all done, there will I will take an X-Acto knife or a razor and cut down there. Cut it. I was kind of wrong about the paper. It's looking woodgy now. Okay. Alrighty, we've just about got this one done. Let me check all up and down. Sometimes I like to check up and down because as it dries, you'll notice where there are little ridges that come up that you don't want where you don't want ridges. So there's might be little lumps. You'll notice little like holes where it's maybe drying too fast, and you're like, oh, did I not put enough there? See, this one has started to dry at the top already. Okay, let's put that right over here. Stay, stay. Oh my God, it's like trying to get our text. Stand still in the cross ties. Okay. I think we're gonna put those aside and let those dry. This is why it takes me so long to do these unicorn horns. Like I've had people want me to make them for them, but it takes me about a week. This is also why I make a bunch of them at a time. Um, I'll make a batch because it has to dry between coats. And on the sculpture coat uh, packaging, it says it takes approximately two hours to dry. Well, I'm guessing that's in North Carolina because down here where it's usually about 80% humidity in the air, it take it can take up to 24 hours to dry between coats. So I make a batch of unicorn horns. And like if you're not making them to sell or anything, you probably won't need all of that. Um, you just, it'll just take you a while. You gotta, if you live in a dry climate, if you're in Arizona or, you know, somewhere else like that, you could probably like two hours, you could probably do all the coats in one day and just keep coming back to and be like, Oh, it's all done now. Yeah. I'm gonna put another coat on. Yay. Meanwhile, here in Savannah every day, I'm like, uh, dry yet. And it's still kind of tacky. And I'm like, Ugh. all right. So let's maybe carve a little bit. If TikTok, Liam's on TikTok, Brittany, you ought to look him up. Um, hang on, I'm going to catch up in the chat. If you're watching this on the playback, give me a second. Hang on, give me a second. We're going to go pee for a second if you need to. I'm going to catch up with the chat people. Okay. I'm stupid and deletals, deleted. Um, is Ashley on or her time different? I'm not sure. Amy said in size matters. Um, yes, and some things definitely. <laughs> okay, hang on. Don't put my seat in your mouth. North Carolina is almost as humid. 60% child, 60% humidity is a dream. Savannah is finally getting hot. Although here, I can't complain. Honestly, usually in May, we are fighting right now, like on whether or not to turn on the air conditioning. I try to hold out till June. Um, just because it's, again, it's a lot of money. To, what am I doing? It's a lot of money to air condition an entire house, even a small one like my house. So we try to get by with windows open and just sweating on camera, being shiny. That's highlighter. That sweat right there. That sweat. That sweat. That highlighter sweat. <laughs> but before I get to carving, let's. I don't know if I want to. I'm going to peek into this real quick. Okay, it's got tape around it. I can't like cut through. There's a glitter explosion. Y'all are going to be here for it. I am. I can't tell you how excited I am about this glitter. They had other colors. Like y'all know, I hate pink, but pink is popular, and I may have to. I may have to get some pink. I was also thinking of, of course. Oh, please don't be a hole. Hang on, in case that's a hole, I want to put a little piece of tape on it. Um, they have blue and they have green, but they don't have teal. And y'all know how I feel about that. I'm at. I could custom mix a color. If I get the blue and I get the green that they have, I bet I can mix it together for a really nice teal. And then that would be a thing that you couldn't get anywhere else. 
Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm so excited right now. Oh, I even got biodegradable bags to, um, to sell the glitter in. Like, so I bought this glitter, I have a scale, this is a pound of glitter, and I am going to divide it up. So this is biodegradable glitter, and I have biodegradable bags to put it in. Oh my God. That is so good, I just wanna play with it. I'm gonna sit here and play with it. <gasps> there was a lump in there. Ah, I gotta break it with a lump. It's so soothing. Ignore me, wrong chat. Oh, that's fine. Uh oh. I do that sometimes. I'm like, who am I talking to? <laughs> oh no, but wait, your feed room roof is leaking? That's bad. No feed loss. The saddles, okay, now I'm invested, Madeline. <laughs> I bet you can save the saddles, oil them real fast. Like, don't let them dry out yet. Groundhog, hey. We're doing good here. Trish is here. Brown sugar is a bit like that. Squeezing it is also always soothing. Yes. I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to open this up super duper carefully. I need, hang on, I want a little bit of glue. I didn't get glue. Hang on, I'm leaving you for a second. Hang on, let me make sure my skirt is not blowing up. Um, I'm still here. I'm still here. Okay. Oh, my Ask Me About My Unicorn shirt, also in my Etsy store. Okay. This is some Aliens Tacky Glue. Where are my scissors? Y'all. Okay. I can't find my other scissors, so I'm going to use my fabric scissors to cut off the little tip. Never, ever do this. All of you who are watching, if you're horrified by watching me use my fabric scissors for something other than fabric, roast me. Oh, nope, that's just it. Okay. I want to see what this gold glitter looks like. Oh my gosh, and that is just coming out. So I am just going to coat the top of this with that tacky glue. I know I should be using a brush. There's like an entire jar of brushes right beside me, behind me. But I'm going to need all y'all not to judge me right now. And yes, I'm that person who, when something is spilling or whatever, I'll just reach out with my hands. Sometimes I get burned, <laughs> literally. Sure, this is moving around the glitter that's already on there. I might have to redo this whole darn thing. What? But that's kind of that's kind of like I why I don't necessarily want to call myself an artist because a lot of times what I do, like I mess up and then I fix it and do something else. Okay, I'm very carefully opening this. I'm just gonna touch it with my. I'm just dipping my fingers in here right now. I'm trying not to waste any. This is, oh my gosh, you can't even see it on camera. Hang on. I'm almost got it done. Maybe I can get Scott in here later on to, um, divide these up into like one ounce or two ounce packages. Okay. Biodegradable glitter. So here is what it looks like on the tip of the unicorn horn. 
Good Lord, that is 24 karat awesomeness. I may have to coat the rest of this thing with that. Oh my God. I'm enjoying that. I'm enjoying that. That makes me feel good about my life. <laughs> and see, even if it gets everywhere, it's biodegradable. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to worry about it. I like that. I like paying a little bit extra to not worry about something. To not have like a little nagging feeling in the back of my mind. Um, that's nice. Also, I'm living for the little lumps in this. I don't know if you can see this. But there's like, see the, oh yeah, you can. See, there's little lumps of glitter because this is bulk and it's sold by weight. So they weighed it out and it means there's these little, so I bought this from a glitter factory, y'all. So like just pressing in on the little glitter things. It's like brown sugar, like Trish, Trish said. Um, you get the little lumps of it and then you can kind of squeeze that out. Oh my God, this feels good. The rest of the live stream is going to be me doing this. I know I keep saying, okay, I'm done. And then I'll feel one more lump. And I'm like, okay, but then just one more lump. And then I feel, okay, just one more lump. Wait, one more lump. <laughs> I'm gonna put that down before it gets me in trouble. I love it. And uh, that is beautiful. The one I had before, now I did use another kind of gold glitter on that horn right here. And it's this one. And this was the biodegradable one too. And this is from the same company, but this is the gold that they have that has a holographic shift to it. And to me, there was like too much red and green in that. And I don't like the way it works with the, um, with the uh, copper, but now this on the end, this is just nothing but gold. That's nothing but gold right there. And that is working for me a whole lot more than the holographic shift does. And in the sunlight, this is going to be blinding. It's going to be blinding. I am so, I've never been so happy to have glitter all over me. Oh my God. Okay. I'll put up this Aliens Techie Lube. Okay. We have coated Sculpture Coat on a couple of the, oh, we got 10 more minutes. Let's, um, let's carve in the last few minutes of the live stream. And let's come down just a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Not so far down that you can see the fan blowing up my skirt. So who's up here? Sorry, I missed some. It was, wait, did I miss Gaia's first ride? Did you live stream that? And I'm sitting here in my house. Like, I'm mad about it, really, if that's what's happening. About ready to sell my cats. One's a kitten, the other turn one year old. I love them, but they bite me. Kittens bite. They do grow out of that, though. Like, there is a real bitey stage that kittens go through. Like, they bite stuff, and they claw stuff, and they just attack things all the time. And with some cats, particularly, like, orange cats, I, for some reason, um, there are some that are just absolutely obnoxious and that you want to literally eat them. Like, they're kittens, and you're like, oh, I can understand why people would eat a cat because I'm ready to do that right now. <laughs> but then they get older, and they get sweeter. Like, the little tiny baby kittens, precious and sweet. Older cats, nice and calm. But there's that teenager, kind of adolescent age of cats where they're just awful. And I still love them, though. Still raining and really humid. There's no way they're drying out yet. I wonder if you can put something on it. Like, if you oil them while they're still damp, that might create mold, though. I wonder if you brought them in somewhere. Like, I would bring my saddles into my living room, put fans on them with some oil. So if it's got airflow on them, that will keep the mold from forming. And then um, an oil would keep them from drying out. I'm not sure. Even a wax to protect it. I just don't want saddles. Oh, I'm getting anxiety thinking about your wet saddles. <laughs> the hair came out great. Thank you. I still wait. Do you see where I didn't quite get it all? This is dye on my hairline right here. Like, I didn't get it completely washed off. And if you look at the back of my neck, too, wait. <laughs> Tried to trade you. Cats are like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, I didn't realize there was eco-friendly glitter either. I don't know if you missed this part, Kelly, in the earlier part of the live stream, but we were talking about how every once in a while something blows up in the extra equestrians group on Facebook. And once it was about glitter, where somebody was like, how dare you destroy the environment with glitter? And I'm like, honey, do you know where you are? <laughs> you know, but then that made me really like, thank you to that person who, even though she was a B word, um, 
the way she said it, uh, she wasn't wrong. It's like, that's my favorite big Lebowski quote for the movie, The Big Lebowski. You're not wrong, Walter. You're just an asshole. <laughs> And I think that all the time sometimes because people like so want to be right. I'm like, I'm, I'm not telling you you're wrong. I'm telling you to be nicer. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, she did bring my attention to this eco-friendly glitter. And then my other friend, Brett, who is in the, Brett Davis, who is uh, probably friends with some of y'all, the witch of Waxhaw. Um, she showed me this supplier for bulk glitter and I, uh, or for biodegradable glitter. And you have to buy it in bulk. So I bought a lot of glitter. Uh, I think we have an idea for a video we can do together. I don't do a whole lot of collabs and I've got my schedule pretty much uh, set out for the next uh, couple of months. First one I'm doing here is um, taking off the corners. Dude, that's all I'm doing. So we're carving while we're chatting right now. I am taking the corners off. And then I am going to carve this down into a unicorn horn shape gradually. So eventually I'll have a bunch of these. I have some one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six of them that are partially completed. Two of them I'm going to are for specific horses. So. And then I have one, two, three, four, five of these uh, foam blocks that I am just going to start cutting. So actually let me, so I have quite a few unicorn horns I could make. So here's what I'm doing right now. This is gonna be the top of my unicorn horn and I mark the middle so that I have a reference point to carve down from. Otherwise, I can end up with the point way over here and then it becomes like a really weird kind of a lopsided horn. And not because it's falling off to the side because there's not enough sculpture coat or structure on it, it ends up falling off to the side because it's just wonky. Okay, so then. we go so now if you don't have sculpture coat and you don't feel like ordering a big jug of it like this was a quart that I ordered and I believe this is the smallest size they have and I ordered that the very first time I ordered it because I did not have money and I wasn't sure how many of these I was going to make like am I just going to make these for just my horses I don't know okay so at this point, it's looking very naughty. <laughs> it looks like the Washington Monument. Da, da, da. America. All right. So this is all I do now that I'm getting some sort of a rounded shape on it. When the fan's got, the fan has pieces of foam blowing around my room. That's going to be nice to clean up later. Okay. So I am carving... At this, I've also known artists to carve foam with electric knives. Um, making a unicorn horn is a little bit like more precision work. I would not want to use a, um, I wouldn't want to use a, an electric knife to carve this. But when I made puppets for the puppet people, a lot of times when we were carving out big parts of puppet bodies, making large puppets, um, we would use um, electric knives to carve into the big blocks of foam that we would use for that. Um, which that's fun, which is where I get a lot of my experience when I make stuff. If you guys want to, if you're new and you want to know, like, how does this lady know stuff? Who are you? I have a bachelor of fine arts and theater and my area of specialty was costuming. So I worked in the costume shop and I made everything from hats and shoes and accessories and belts to period costumes, uh, you know, Renaissance gowns, um, and also designing things, uh, building corsets and sloping patterns and all that kind of stuff. And pretty much like everything is like creative problem solving. There's not a template or a set of instructions for anything you do in theater costuming. Really. There are books of techniques and lists of resources, but there's no like step one. Um, and it's the same thing in puppetry. I spent a lot of my professional life as an adult, uh, working for a puppetry company, building puppets. And so making things for horses is a lot like making puppets or making costumes for theater um, because 
It's not like making something from a simplicity pattern that you buy at the fabric store. There is not um, a, a template that fits everything. Um, you can't even get like different, even sizes of horses, draft, horse, pony, mini, whatever. They're not necessarily going to fit every kind of horse. So it's important to be able to take measurements. That's another video I'm going to do is how to take measurements on your horse. I, I want to make a um, costuming sheet for horses that you could print out. Um, so like, you know, you take these measurements, this is like you'd use in a costume shop. You have, um, in a costume shop, the actors come in and each actor, um, has a character sheet and the character sheet lists all of their measurements and their hat size and their shoe size and, um, everything that could possibly, you know, any kind of information that would be needed to make something for them. So anyway, so that is my background. That's what I've been doing for the last 30 years. So yeah, pretty much a unicorn and centaur is my entire professional life plus horses. <laughs> so, cause that's, I spent my whole life going, look, I, I spent my whole, I've spent my whole life either doing horses or art, um, you know, theater or horses. And finally, like when I was in my forties or, you know, like five years ago, I'm like, all right, I want to try to do both. <laughs> I would like to combine everything that I've been doing my entire life. So you can see now I've got a nice, it's coming in on one side a little bit funky, but that's okay. Don't panic yet. But that's also why we keep taking an assessment of what we're doing. So once you've worked on a section a little bit, back off, take a look at it. Are you going in too hard somewhere? Or do you need to trim somewhere else? I don't measure these. I just do. And now that's starting to look. We're going to say it looks like a banana. That's what we're going to say for the kids. Uh, it looks like a banana. Where are we in the chat? I need a sip of my drink. Hang on. Let me catch him in the chat and catch a sip of my drink. You say the J like in German. So, Joanna. Oh, you're Polish. Okay. We have one of our regulars in the chat, um, um, Geek Girl. Um, who comes in the chat sometimes. Um, she is Polish as well. Now, I don't know what generation, she's American. Um, so I don't know what, if her parents were from Poland or uh, grandparents, but she's like a hundred percent Polish, I think. And like makes all the Polish food. She speaks Polish and all her friends go, uh, or her daughters go to these um, uh, dancing, traditional dance uh, competitions and stuff. And it's just wonderful. I love it. And the closest I've been to Poland is Germany. Closest I've been to Sweden is Germany. <laughs> Absolutely hate mascots. They're terrified of, you know what though? That's what I did for 20 years. And some people are terrified of them. I have been a mascot in life-size puppets before. I've done it at festivals and I've done it um, in stores uh, for grand openings for other kinds of events and um, things like that. Like the company that I worked for, people would just hire you to walk around in these costumes. And um, there was a mascot for one of the malls here for years in the nineties, they had a mascot. It was rags, the dog. And there was this big dog costume and I got paid like 15 bucks an hour to walk around in this costume um, uh, and just interact with people. And, you know, not to talk, but, you know, using your body language and stuff. And there are, you really have to read people. You can see through the costumes. So I, I know there are not everybody cares like I did, but I'm a performer. So I wasn't just in the costume going, like, you couldn't see me, but I'm in there smiling. <laughs> I'm in there doing my thing. And you read people. And when you see people, they either light up when they see you coming or they are completely expressionless, or they're clearly afraid of you. Like you can, there's one of those three reactions. Some people don't even register you. They're like looking, at, they're doing something else. Like their their life is not about puppets or you know fantasy or anything like that. They don't even care about that kind of stuff, and that's fine. Those people have their lives. Um, and then there are people. So the only people that I would approach are the people that absolutely light up. I look at them, and they're looking at me like this. <laughs> or they're already running up to me for a hug or, you know, they're trying to hold their little kid back, you know, who's running up to me or whatever. Those are the people you approach. I don't even greet the people who are not paying attention to me. And I don't even look at the, if I notice someone who was afraid of me, I look the other way. I just go the other way. Every once in a while, it would be heartbreaking, Trish. There would be somebody 
who a child who was clearly terrified. And the parents think it's funny that they're screaming and they're pushing them toward, go give him a hug. Give him a hug. He wants to hug you. And the child is like terrified and screaming. And I'm like, okay, really? No, I'm just a cartoon dog. Um, <laughs> I really don't need this. I don't want to be the reason this child is in therapy in 15 years. You know, just ma'am, don't do that to me. But then there are, um, there are times where, I mean, I remember going to a festival and somebody came up to me and I was in this dragon costume that had these beautiful, like individually made scales that were made of this beautiful iridescent fabric. It was all over it. And it was just, it looked like a dinosaur dragon kind of a thing. And somebody came up to me and she was leading someone. So someone had her hand. So I'm like, it was that girl blind? Because it looked like she, she had her um, head down. And the lady said, hi, uh, my friend is blind. And I've been trying desperately to describe to her what I'm looking at. <laughs> so she said, I know people probably aren't allowed to touch the costumes, but like, would you make an exception? And so I said, sure. And I'm not supposed to talk. So I'm in the costume, like whispering to this lady. I'm like, sure, she can touch it. So this, I had, there was uh, twice that this has happened to me, once with a child and one with a lady. And just watching her face while she's touching the costume was amazing. Um, I'm in the costume crying. I'm like, this is so beautiful. <laughs> yeah, adventures in my life. There you go. What time is it? It's probably, that. yeah, it's 503. We got to quit this live stream here soon, y'all. But I totally understand. There's nothing wrong with you for being terrified of mascots or for not liking them. I, I think that's a normal, natural response to something that is kind of in the uncanny valley like that, where it kind of looks real, but it kind of doesn't. So it's, it's off, it, it's off kilter and it, it, it puts you at ill at ease. It's, it's uncomfortable. Definitely. Um, and there are things that I'm that way with like certain kinds of dolls and things. Um, so I totally understand that. I totally do. Okay. Well, we're not going to get, we're just going to get one banana today. I feel like we've had a productive live stream though. I feel like I could just sit here and keep going for a while longer. Like, let me show you what we've got done over here. So just, this was the first one I did and I painted with the sculpture coat. It's not completely dry yet. So you can see where places where I had it on a little bit thicker, um, it's still um, uh, white or opaque. And then this one, but it's still not dry. It's still tacky to the touch. And then this one as well, you can see places on it where it's still got the wet sculpture coat. So it'll probably be a couple hours before I can get another one on. And the thing about the sculpture coat, if you do use it, you really do need to let it dry completely between coats. I have done the thing where I'm like, F it. I don't care about the humidity. I am just going to put all the coats on this. And as soon as it's dry enough to put another coat on, I will. And I swear to God, that thing took a week to fully dry because I wasn't waiting for the layers underneath to dry completely. So I would say it's going to take you a week, no matter how long you do it, if you're in a humid climate. So um, I also experimented with our glitter. I haven't opened the silver yet, but the silver five. Da -da 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 -da. So excited about this. And we started carving up a fresh one. Get your mind out of the gutter. There is stuff all over the place. I think I even have like, I think I have stuff on my face. Thank you, you guys, for showing up today, for talking about unicorn horns, for talking about sculpture coat, talking about creativity, talking about horses, puppets, mascots, and everything. Um, I love doing these live streams. They're super fun for me. I hope they're fun for you guys. Um, next week, I think if... Um, uh, next week, I may start getting to the helmet covers, and I may at first do just how to make a simple helmet cover, and but I got to find a pattern for it first. So I'm gonna figure out how to do a simple hel helmet cover, <laughs> simple helmet cover, and we'll see uh, how that works. And um, if I can get a nice simple pattern for it, then we're gonna figure out how to do a helmet cover where it looks like a crown. So I've got this green velvet, crushed velvet that I'm gonna. Um, put over the top, we'll make the cover out of that. But then we're going to take white fur and then make that fake armor and a crown to go around it so that when you're wearing your helmet, it looks like you're wearing a queen's crown because you're a queen and you deserve to look like it when you ride. I said it. <laughs> Just keep chatting while you wear. Aw, Becca. <laughs> Aw. It's just absolutely hate clowns. Not funny at all. I'm not a big uh, clown person either. If you don't have anything on, if you have anything on your face besides glasses, I don't want anything to do with you. I love it. I do. The big part of being a performer or being a good performer 
Um, like I've done improv a lot as well. And the big part of being an improvisational performer or a costumed character um, is reading the room is looking at people like they can't see your eyes, but I'm making eye contact with you. I'm reading your face. And I only interact with people who are looking for that experience because nobody, I'm not going to have a good time interacting with someone who's terrified of me or someone who thinks this is stupid. I've had that before where like I've accidentally said hi to someone and they're like, I've had people tell me to F off. I've had people um, tell me I'm an idiot. Um, I just, I, I can't even tell y'all. So you learn, you learn little things when you do this kind of job. <laughs> yes, I will see everybody else in the next live stream. I have, my phone is running down here. Um, we've got some work done on our um, unicorn horns, but I think now I'm going to take a break and maybe go work outside in my garden for a little bit. And then I'll hit you guys next. The next video is going to be, what was the next video I was going to do? Uh oh, I can't even remember now. I got to get myself together. <laughs> But we'll have another live stream next week at 4 p.m. Eastern time. And um, there'll be another video out on Wednesday. Okay, so thank you guys for joining me in my freshly colored hair with the hair dye on my hairline. And I'll see you guys next time.